do think that the, um, the command, like Jesus takes 613 codes, and you know, many of us take it down to 10, and Jesus takes it to two. Love God with everything you have, love your neighbor as yourself. Like, so we could tweet it, and it could fit on, the, on, the, on social media better. Um, but you, but you, the love your neighbor as yourself um, dynamic, you don't love yourself and therefore you don't love your neighbor. And this is what we witness. So why don't people love themselves? Because life is tough and hard. And you know, somebody is wealthy, let's use Trump for just as an example. Um, somebody wealthy like that, somebody whose father, you know, you read his cousin's or niece's book, um, she who is a therapist, You've, you've got an absent mother because she's sick, sick, sick all the time. You've got an absent father because he's busy and then when he's present, he's not even looking at you. And you're like this kid who doesn't get the foundation of I see you, I love you. If children don't get I see you, I love you, I see you, I love you, my psychologist had on, there is a hole in that soul that is looking to be plugged. And it might get plugged with overeating, it might get plugged with over sex, it might get plugged with, with uh, drugs or alcohol, it might get plugged with mean, it might get plugged with, well, here's how I'll feel powerful, I'll just be a butthead, you know? But the, the core need of breath, food, water, and love, when that's missing for children, they're impinged, they are, they are um, what Donna Winnicott would say, we develop a false self. We, we don't know how to live fully without love. And sadly, generations of young people, generations of people, poor Irish person immigrates to America, um, poor Irish person immigrates to America, um, doesn't get hired, doesn't get a job, um, lives in a poor neighborhood, lives in a poor neighborhood with blacks, learns how to survive by fighting blacks, becomes a police officer. You feel the story I'm telling? becomes a police officer in, and, 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 and you know, that poor Irish person who came to America, whose folks owned enslaved Africans and the war came and took away their wealth and the slaves went north. All of that stuff is in so many people's stories that leads to you're my enemy, that leads to I have to pretend like I'm better than you, that leads to I don't actually love myself. It's huge. And I don't know how to fix it institutionally, but I think we need a whole bunch of people preaching love and teaching love and loving each other, listening to stories. I feel you, I hear that, I got that. That makes sense to me. I can feel your heartbreak. Let's see if we can work together to fix it. It has to be the way we do it. It's, it's not intuitive to say, I'm going to put myself first. Like we think about that as narcissistic or selfish. On the other hand, if you're on an airplane flying and the um, <clears throat> oxygen mask falls down, you've been told to put your own mask on first because you can't help somebody until you help yourself. So I don't know that we have the luxury of saying, okay, American people of faith, let's all put ourselves first right now. Okay, ready? I know I said go. I don't think we have that luxury, but I think we have to cultivate Patterns of self-love as therapeutic work, as 12-step work, as pastoral counseling work, as sermons preached from the pulpit, as, as the way we treat our staff. Are you loving you today? I, you know, everywhere that there's gonna be a love revolution has got to inject the importance of self-love in those movements or we're never going to heal the world. Too many broken people pretending like they're doing good stuff is not gonna heal the world.